Gravetta's magic. And it's complete for the touchdown. Gravett, the rookie from Boomer. He grew up in Garfield, New Jersey, 10 minutes from Giant Stadium. But short of a first down, Wayne Cravat, oh, Cravat, was able to work free. What a move by Wayne Cravat. Absolutely unbelievable. You're talking about a kid who is just all heart. Welcome to the Underdog Jets podcast with Wayne Corbett and Robbie Sabo. Welcome back to the Underdog Jets podcast, ladies and gentlemen, with Wayne Corbett. And we are here after Championship Sunday, and the NFL had a hell of a weekend again. Six straight games, which have been tremendous, and it's going to be the Bengals and the Rams in L.A. for the second straight year. We never had a Super Bowl with a home team. And two straight years now, we will have that. Tampa last year, L.A. this year. And Joe Burrow, the Bengals, two wins two years ago, four wins last year. Suddenly, 10 wins this year in the playoffs. Jets fans are really hopeful as they try to you know, use that template in a lot of ways to turn this program around. Wayne, uh, what did you think about the weekend and that comparison with Cincy and New York? Uh, that would be nice. Yeah, be great if we follow the that would what they did in the last couple of years. Uh, they definitely had the talent. Um, you know, it just wasn't work out for. Them. But uh, when Joe Burrow came to town, you know, everything changed. You know, just what people were thinking, the fans were thinking. You know, how positive it was, and they feel and they felt like they had a chance to do something, and they certainly turned it around this year. The addition of Jamar Chase and some of those free agents have really stepped up. So I'm happy for them. Like you said, hopefully that's a pattern that we can uh, do uh, like they did a couple of years ago. Yeah. And you got to feel good for the fans too, right? It's been since the eighties, you know, with Boomer and Boomer was happy afterwards too. I caught him on CBS. He was yeah. beaming. He couldn't, con- like he tried to hold back his smile, but he just couldn't do it. He was so happy. Yeah. We got, we just got to follow that, that blueprint that they did. And, uh, you know, we still have some good draft picks. Hopefully pick up, uh, some other guys that get help Zach, like they did for, uh, for Burrow, you know, bringing in Jamar Chase. It's funny, Jamar Chase, they were saying he dropped every pass in uh, preseason and, mm-hmm. you know, he's complaining that the ball was bigger and the stripes on the ball was different from college. Now the guy broke all sorts of records for rookies and rookies in the playoffs. So, uh, kind of shoved it in their face. I'm glad he did. Cause I think he's a great talent. He is. And they, they're used to each other too. You can see that right off the bat. Cause they played yeah. at LSU together and the jets with that 10th pick, a lot of people think receiver there, you know, maybe Garrett Wilson, Drake London, and, you know, Burks. So it could be sort of the same formula, but we'll see. Yeah. All right. So defensive draft for those who were with us two weeks ago, we did the offensive fantasy draft. Obviously I got the better of Wayne. He knows it. Mm-hmm. And Last week, we did the first virtual meet and greet, which was great. And this week, we'll, re- we'll cap off the team by doing the defensive draft, 11 players, and a kicker and a punter as well. And as usual, Wayne, you get to pick, knowing the positions, you want to go first or the next two? I will go next two. Okay, interesting. You could let me go first, too. No insult there, either. I'm no. feeling pretty lucky. It'd be nice. I'm going to be nice. I feel, bad, I feel bad for you. How bad the first. Uh, <laughs> I almost wore a hat. I almost wore my winter hat. Actually. I have, a, I have it right behind me just in case you, you'd pull out the gray hair jokes. All right. You know, I don't even have to think about this one. Let's go. Daryl Rivas. Jeez. Because of position. And I think it's the biggest gap between one and two. I'm going to go Rivas with the first pick. So Revis on Sabo's team, Corbett has two, and here are the rosters, two folks, two defensive tackles, two defensive ends, two linebackers, two corners, two safeties, and then a flex. And the flex could be a linebacker, a corner, or a safety. So you can go with a base, a base defense, four, three, or you can go with a, you know, a nickel, three corners, or even big nickel, three safeties, and then a kicker and a punter too. All right. I will start off with Joe Klecko. Can't go wrong with Klecko, right? Can't go wrong with Klecko. He can play any position on the yes, line. Yes, he can. He can. So, you know what? We'll pencil him in at D-tackle right now, but you could move him if you want to. 
Gotcha. So Klecko is Corbett's first pick at D tackle. Where does he go with number two? Um, I'm going to go with Aaron Glenn, just so you don't have two cornerbacks. Ooh, Aaron. Aaron Glenn was the guy when I came in. He was outstanding. Very quick, right? He used his hands. He wasn't, he was a little smaller than me, but he made up for that in, in quickness and, you know, position, you know, positioning out receivers. Uh, and I think that's the guy I wanted to go against. I made sure I, you know, I wanted to get him as much as possible to kind of see where I stood, right. you know, when I came into camp. And uh, he was a great battle. We had some great battles over the years. So he, certainly he would be my first cornerback pick. Yeah, he's probably, the, he's got to be the number two corner in franchise history. Yeah. Uh, undisputed. Um, where am I going to go? Number four overall pick. Uh, this is an interesting one. You know what? I have to, I can't pass up Gastineau. I, I got to go Mark Gastineau, get my edge rusher, and then start outside with Revis and Gastineau, and away we go. I'm glad you didn't take my pick for the end. I would like John who, Abraham. Ah, uh, okay. So that's, you're picking your era. Here we go. Abraham, Glenn, starting off strong Listen, here. Abraham is uh, very underrated. He had over a hundred sacks. He played a lot of years, uh, had a lot of injuries over the years um, that he played through. So he wasn't always healthy, but uh, definitely, definitely don't, people don't appreciate what he did. You know, I'm not sure how many years he played in, in New York, but he made an impact. Uh, wherever you went. So certainly uh, my top pick at the end. Yeah. They have not been able to fill that edge spot since Abraham left. Really. Oh, yeah, he, he, was, he was outstanding. Yeah. He was, he was he unbelievable. Was a sick, sick athlete. Yeah. It, it's been 15 years, 16, 17 years, and they're still looking for that guy. Calvin Pace did a good job. Jason Taylor one year, but still they're, they're still looking for that guy. Fans keep on speaking Abraham's name. Uh, All right. So Corbett got Abraham and Who's your guy? Klecko, Klecko and Abraham. Klecko, is he going to get in the Hall of Fame? Do we know? Do you think it's going to happen eventually? I don't know if he's still eligible. But is it is it past eligibility at this point? If you look at it, though, you know, making a Pro Bowl at four positions. Yeah. Um, and what he meant to the organization. Uh, I sure hope he hope he gets in because it certainly deserves it. All right. Where I'm going to go here is between a couple of guys, actually in your era too, which is interesting. Um, but you know what? I'll stick to my roots, my old school roots and go Grantham. I'll go Larry Grantham. He might be the best linebacker in franchise history, but it's up for debate and I'll stick him as uh, my number one linebacker. Okay. Let's look at safety. Safety. That's one of those positions where they're, They've been thin throughout the years. Yeah. All right. Safety. The list we have is Victor Green. That's your guy. Jamal Adams, Baird, and Paulson, who both racked up a lot of interceptions. Baird has the most in franchise history uh, from the 60s. Eric McMillan, Jim Hudson, Kerry Rhodes, Brian Washington. Uh, I'll, take, like? uh, I'll take Victor Green. Victor Green, another Obviously one of those from guys. my era, but uh, another underrated guy. You know, could have made a couple Pro Bowls. Uh, as tough as they came coming down on the box and getting in the running game, you know, good on coverage. Um, another unsung hero from when, uh, when I played, didn't get a lot of attention, but uh, I know he's definitely worth the, you know, the pick at safety. He, he led the team in tackles too. your teams, yeah. I think 95 and 96. I think he led the years. Team in tackles. Yeah. The years um, when I was there, he had a great career. Yeah. Yeah. He was tremendous. And he's still he's still quite active too on social media. Um, yeah, his oh, daughter yeah. his daughter's yeah. a, a big athlete too, right? His son too. Yeah, his he's son? very active on social media, so follow him if you get a chance. Yeah, if we'll see if we can get his account and shout it out. But he he's right. a good he's definitely a good follow. Um, where am I going to go next? You know what? I might have to snag one of Krebet's guys here. Uh, yeah, I'll go Mo Lewis. Mo. Okay. Just the versatility. You could put him at edge if you want. You could put him at this in the second level. He'll he'll go next to Grantham for me. And so I have Revis, Gastineau, Grantham, and Mo Lewis as my four. I will follow you at linebacker and go with Shade Tree Jones. Marvin Jones. Marvin. Marvin Jones. Now he's a guy that gets lost in in the shuffle sometimes when guys when 
you think about Jets linebackers. You know, it's weird. You have them near the bottom of the list. I'm not right. sure why to alphabetical here or not, but uh, he could bring it. He could. You know, he could fill the hole. Um, I don't know how much he can cover guys, you know, stuff like that, but he didn't need to. You know, he made a big impact, you know, stuffing up the middle of the field. Uh, certainly one of my favorite teammates that I played with. Um, so uh, definitely my first linebacker that I want to take. If you look at him and David Harris, their careers, it's pretty similar. Really right. similar, those two. They were just steady guys. All right, so Corbett has Klecko, Abraham, Marvin Jones, Aaron Glenn, and Victor Green. I have Revis, Gassineau, Grantham, and Lewis. And so I need deep tackles. I need the end. I need corner. I need safeties. Um, let's go... I'm going to go, I'll steal another one of your era, your eras, guys, in Sean Ellis. That was my next pick. That was your next pick? Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. That's really a shame, I got to tell you. Because he could play inside and outside. He's like my answer to Klecko, I guess. All right. I will take Marty Lyons before you uh, before you take them. Not, not in my era, but uh, certainly great player. Uh, he's been with the organization 40 years as a player, you know, as an announcer. Yep. You know, in the media broadcaster. Um, True, you know, gentle giant does a lot of charity with the Mar Marty Lawrence Foundation. Uh, just a great all around guy and a great player. Yeah, when you when you hear the post game press conferences after the game with the coach, Marty Lawrence is always the first question because he yeah. comes down from the box and he does a great job with that. Look at his look at your line: Klecko, Marty Lawrence, and John Abraham. Oh yeah. man, I got some catching up to do here. All right, let's see. Let me go. I need I need a lot still. You know what? I'm going to. You got to get rid of Sean Ellis on there. Is Ellis still on there? Okay. Yeah. You there know you what? Go. I'll go Philbin. Philbin, another underrated guy for that Super Bowl team. Um, wait, do I have two edge players already? Let me double check that. No, I could use Philbin. Philbin was one of their best defenders on that Super Bowl winning team. So. Philbin opposite Gastineau with Sean Ellis in the middle. I'll take that. All right. All right. What are you looking at? What do I need? You need a D end, a linebacker, a corner, a safety, and a flex. Let's go to D end. Do you need a D end? I do not. All right. Then I don't need to so go you to wait on that one. Uh, let's go to um, what do I need? You need a safety, a corner, line. Uh, no, that's. Yeah, DN, but you could wait linebacker, corner, safety. Let's go linebacker. All right. Let's see what's that linebacker. Atkinson, Clifton, David Harris, Buttle, Lance Meal. I know where I'm going. When I came in, this was the old guy on the team. And I remember, uh, you know, he gave me a ride to the cafeteria one day. And, you know, everybody had their flashy cars or Porsches and Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And Kyle Clifton had an old beater. He's mm -hmm. driving around, you know, not fancy. This is an original kind of guy, soulful guy, uh, taught me a lot. So I will go with Kyle Clifton as my other linebacker. You know, they didn't track tackles all the time. It was one of those late stacks like sacks, but he is the all-time Jets leader in tackles, I believe. Right. Kyle, and he was a special teams guy too. He just yeah. animal off of kickoffs. Yeah. So Marvin Jones and Kyle Clifton are your linebackers. Okay. Next up for me. I still need a D tackle, need a corner, need two safeties and a flex. Uh, you know what? You know what I need here? I need a big run stuffer. So I think I'm gonna go Jason Ferguson. A Parcells favorite, huge on your 98 team, just gobbled up the run. So give me Ferguson to to plop next to uh Sean Ellis. All right. You need kickers and punters too. We keep disrespecting them, but they're in the mix. D end, corner, safety, flex, kicker, and a punter. Let's go back to corner. All right. Some of the corners out there. We got Bobby Jackson, Cromarty, James Hasty, Johnny Sample, Beverly. Got a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. I will go with Bobby Jackson. Give me Bobby Jackson. Okay. You're going to be out there playing with a but Klecko. Just one of those guys that knew how to play the game, very smart. Um, and one of the veterans that when I came in, you know, was a fan, 
you know, gave me an encouragement and he's very much involved with the legends community, just legend community. So I see him at a fair amount of games, always pleasant guy, great family man. So uh, he will be my other corner. Okay. Nice. Uh, need now corner two safeties and a flex and a kicker and a punter. Um, you know, and kicker. Let's go. You know what? I don't know if this guy should be here, to be honest. What do you think? I'll let you make the call. Jamal Adams, three I'm seasons take, with I'm the not Jets. Taking him. You can take him if you should want. We, should we take him off the board because of how it ended? Let's take, take him, him off, off the board. Take him off the board. Let's take him off the board because of how it ended. All right. So at safety, I'm going to go with Bill Baird, who is the franchise leader with 34 interceptions. How I know that, I don't know. Yeah. But Bill Baird, he was a solid guy in the, in the 60s, my era. And that would be my first safety. Okay. You're looking at a safety, a D end, and a flex, and a kicker and a punter. Uh, where's the kickers? Kickers down there. We got Pat Leahy. We got Nick Folk. We have Jim Turner, John Hall. I have to wait on that. What's the other uh, safety? Safeties. Paulson, who was kind of in Baird's era. Eric McMillan, who had a lot of picks in the 80s, late 80s. Jim Hudson. Yeah, I'll, another take old Eric, guy. I'll take Eric McMillan. Eric McMillan. Yeah, I remember... Uh, he made the Pro Bowl at least once or twice. Yeah. And had a season with seven or eight picks, which is pretty good. Really good corner. Again, another uh, Jets legends, um, part of the community. Um, see him in some events. Um, always see him when they have the Ring of Honor and Alumni Weekend. Uh, just a great guy to talk to. Uh, this, this guy, is, like I said, just didn't get the, um, you know, the, the media attention yeah. that some of these other higher names got, but certainly a great contributor to the organization. Yeah, I loved McMillan growing up. All right, so what do I need here? Need a corner, a safety, and a flex. Let me see your offense. Did you go with three receivers? You went with three receivers. I went with Richie Anderson, so I got a base offense. Because you went with three receivers, I got to go with three corners. And I only have one corner right now, which is hurting. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go with a slot guy here and go with Ray Mickens okay. uh, to fill out my slot. I got Revis on the outside. I got Mickens and I can't delete Mickens for some reason. I used to call Ray Sticky Mickey. Sticky Mickey. Because in the slot, he would grab onto you and not let go. Not legally, but you <laughs> grab onto you and not let go. Um, it was tough. He got called a lot on it, but uh, quick guy, strong, yeah. strong for his size. And, and I always enjoyed uh, my conversations and my time hanging out with him on, on the road. Uh, you know, uh, definitely a character. Uh, would have been my next pick for uh, for corner or if we were doing slot corners, he would have been my first pick. Yeah, it's like, hey, where your hands are, if you're grabbing, it's, if your yeah. hands are on the inside, you're good to go. And you, they can't call them all. So, right. you know. All right. Corner. I need a corner and a safety, a kicker, and a punter. Uh, let's go to safety. And this is a personal favorite of mine. You just took right. It's my turn. Who did I take? Mickens. Oh, see, I, I tried to go twice in a row. Okay. Yeah. What, what do, do I need? need? What do you need here? Uh, D end kicker and punter. D end kicker and punter. And a flex. Uh, I got to take my punter, uh, two point Tommy, two Tommy points. Tupa. Okay. He's your backup quarterback, too. Yeah. Yeah. Two point I think he had like the most two point conversions, uh, out of anybody. You know, a lot of punters are the holders for kickers. Mm -hmm. Uh, great guy. I think he has like six or seven kids, something crazy. And I think all their names start with a T. Oh, really? Something like that. Yeah, I think I think that was I think that was the story. I'm a great family man, a great family. Uh, but he said he actually played quarterback uh, when we needed to him as emergency quarterback. And you were hurt punter. for that, weren't you? So uh, yeah, he's very versatile. Uh, so he'll he'll be my picker punter. Okay, so you got two bet punter. Yeah, that was the Vinny game, the Achilles game with Vinny. Yeah, where Tupa came in and Parcells didn't want to use the emergency quarterback because he'd lose a roster spot. Right. All right, so I need a corner, a safety, a kicker, and a punter. Uh, let's go with a personal favorite of mine, Jim Leonard. All right. He wasn't there for a long time, but he was part of key teams on those Rex teams. He coach at Wisconsin. I think he's still at Wisconsin now. Um, 
but he's in coaching and he's just one of those smart, smart, uh, excuse me, smart safeties. And I'll stick him back there with Baird. All right. Yeah, so he's, you, a, he's a coach's player. Everybody that he played for loved him uh, for what he brought to the table. Yeah. And Rex, Rex wrote a book, I believe. And on the cover, he could have picked anyone. He put Jim Leonard on the cover. Nice. All so right. I so need D in and a kicker. D in and a kicker and a flex too. Okay. And, but, oh, I see it. Okay. Keep, keep in mind, I, I picked a fullback. Okay. So uh, you might want to go line, but you don't have to. You can go smaller and play my base I need offense. D end or D tackle? D and let me check, double check the end. Okay. But you That's could good. put, you could put Klecko at the end. So it could be either or. Okay. okay. So you got Elliot who was an old school guy, smaller, but played on the inside. Cause they were smaller back in the day. Chris Jenkins, monster, Sione Pua, monster, Salam, Wilkerson, Damon Harrison, Verlin Biggs, Dennis bird, Calvin pace. A lot of guys left. Uh, Hugh Douglas. Give me Hugh Douglas. Hugh Douglas. Big Dooley. He, uh, he came in. Um, he was one of the the four draft picks. So we had the four first round draft picks. Was that the year? No, it was no, the year before that. Yeah, it was, I think it was before that. It was my year. Yeah, uh, he, he and Kyle Brady came in, and he might have uh, had. He might have been the rookie of the year that year too. If I uh, remember, he was something. I'm not sure how many years he played. I know he went to the Eagles, mm. but uh, he got around that court. He was a big boy too. He was a big old boy, and yeah. uh, he, you know he he used it to his advantage. You get that that weight behind him going. Uh, he would roll guys over. Um, so uh, definitely, yeah. I wish he would have been with the organization longer, but you know, with the tough year we had in the first two years, just having guys like that with a great at great attitude and just a funny character, uh, definitely want him on my team. Yeah, good pick, Hugh Douglas. He had a monster year that year. Um, all right, so I need a corner, a kicker, and a punter. Let's go. You took a kicker, right? No, you took a punter. Yeah. So I'll go Pat Leahy. I think he played 85 years with the Jets. He played right, so right. long with the Jets. I think he's the, the all-time points leader. So let me go with the old, reliable Pat Leahy at kicker. You are looking for a kicker and a flex. Let's see the flex. We got... Uh... Flex, you could go linebacker and match Richie Anderson, or you can go lighter and go corner or safety. Let me go with the tackling machine, David Harris. Okay. He is one of the uh, younger guys before me uh, or after me yeah. that played, but uh, a tackling machine. And if you put him next to Kyle Clifton, you're good for about 300 tackles a year. Nothing's getting by those guys. Uh, certainly can be a ring of honor candidate someday. You know, he played his whole career with the Jets, right? Yes. Uh, oh, he he um, might have he played a year in New England, but I don't know if he dressed for any games. Okay. Yeah. Outstanding player. Don't, don't know him very well, but I, I knew what he did on the field, so he will be my flex. It's not a bad linebacking crew right there. Marvin Jones, Clifton, and David Harris. I'm going to have to get Richie Anderson to on some angle routes. Right. All right, so what do I need here? Uh, corner and punter. Good luck. Since you, since you went Tupa. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it's, Mickens is gone. We know that. So it's either Cromarty or Hasty or Johnny Sample. You know what? I'll go with James Hasty. Okay. I like James Hasty. I like that era. That was the first era I really remember. And he was he was a big corner. He was physical. So Give me that physical guy opposite Rebus. I remember, um, I think when I was Hofstra, we, uh, they asked some of the players to go over and help move some of the Jets' equipment. Uh -huh. Now, Pete Carroll was a coach before Cotite, right? Yes. Yeah, All Carroll right. for one so, year. Right, the Hofstra uh, gym, gymnasium, me and my buddy was over there playing against Pete and Hasty, and I didn't uh -huh. know who he was. Um, definitely a serious guy. Uh, I know we were playing. He's just, you know, didn't say much to seem, you know, seemed aggravated. And I just said, looked at Pete and he's like, James don't like people. And I was just <laughs> like, all right, I get it. And he played that way. He, yeah. he had a little mean streak in him. And it's funny. I meet him 20 years later and he's the nicest guy. But my first, you know, experience with him wasn't, wasn't great. But uh, when I did meet him, uh, you know, I enjoyed my company with him. Yeah, give me those guys that, that don't like people. Give me the, give me All some right. of those guys on my team. So my last pick is kicker. Uh, uh, kicker. 
And, yeah, uh, you need a kicker. It, my pick would have been John Hall, definitely. Obviously, he won the game in overtime at the Monday Night Miracle. But the thing about John Hall, I've never seen a kicker who kicked the ball and ran down full speed on kickoff. And he made more big tackles and big hits than any kicker I've ever seen. Yeah, he did. Uh, great field goal kicker, but uh, fun to watch him on uh, kickoff, seeing him, uh, you know, blow guys up and uh, just all around great guy. Yeah. It, you know what I remember from him too? The way he wore his chin strap. Yeah. He always had it underneath his chin, right? Like a hockey yeah. player, like a helmet, like a hockey player helmet. Yeah, he was a cool dude. All right. Again, on my last pick, I just need a punter. So I'll go with Curly Johnson. Don't know much about him, to be honest. I just know Curly fits the era of the 60s. So give me a guy named Curly on my team to round it out and round out this draft. And we are done. Let's list the teams here. Crebet. His defensive team is Klecko, Marty Lyons on the inside, Johnny Abraham, Hugh Douglas on the outside, linebacker, Marvin Jones, Clifton, and David Harris, secondary, Aaron Glenn, Bobby Jackson, Victor Green, Eric McMillan, and then John Hall and Tom Tupa. And my roster looks like this defensive line, Jason Ferguson, Sean Ellis, Gaston O'Philbin, linebacker, Grantham, Mo Lewis. And then corner, Revis, Hasty, Mickens. I go three corners because he went three receivers. And then safety, Baird, Jim Leonard, kicker, Leahy, punter, Curly Johnson. What do you think? Do you want to pay me now or like the simulation, <laughs> do the simulation and see how our roster is? Uh, we got to let the we gotta let the social, the people speak on social media. And okay. you, you got me on the offense, I'll tell you that. It was a washout. Yeah. No yeah. one voted for me. You know, I was yeah. begging for votes. Yeah, you took that Quebec guy, I ruined it for you. Yeah, hit a last pick, <laughs> last pick in dodgeball. It was, oh, that was me, not Quebec. <laughs> so, so this was fun. Uh, hopefully, you know, people enjoy it. We're going to do some more content, um, you know, after the Super Bowl, talk about the game. But certainly, be aware uh, for subscribers to Jets X Factor from 080. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway next week. Not sure what it's going to be, but it'll be something good. So, so tune in uh, when you get a chance. Yeah, we will we'll drop something. We'll drop some sort of activity and a clue to uh, announce a winner to, to get people in the action for that giveaway. So so uh, tune in next Monday. It'll be like the Super Bowl preview, sort of. We'll, we'll talk yeah. about a lot of draft stuff, maybe some free agency stuff as well. Um, and then away we go. We'll see what the offseason looks like. A lot of draft talk. Next four months will be draft talk, really, four or five months. Um, and free agency as well. Go to jetsxfactor.com and find the underdog Jets podcast uh, selection in the menu and use discount code 80. A lot of people have been using it. You get a nice discount off the yearly or monthly uh, subscription. And you get your choice of a free 8x10 signed by Wayne Corbett, with which a lot of people are taking advantage of. Yeah, and I posted some of the answers and the, you know, the videos of the Q&A and they had some great questions. Uh, hopefully, uh, people enjoy them. But uh, you know, start getting your questions ready for the next one. Mm -hmm. I think we had fun with it. You know, had some good back and forth with everybody. So look forward to that, and uh, hopefully, a good Super Bowl. All right, Wayne. We'll we'll talk next Monday. Uh, Rams, Bengals, Joe Burrow with his victory cigars. It, it'll be a stunner if they do it again in the Super Bowl. I think. I mean, not a not a not a Jet sixty eight stunner, but. It'll be somewhat of a stunner, but it should be a good one. Yeah, I am definitely the Bengals to win would be nice, but all the crap and winless and bad seasons with Detroit, I would love to see Matt Stafford uh, yeah. get a Super Bowl win after after all those years. It's one of those refreshing Super Bowls, right? Like two yeah. new teams. The Rams were there a couple of years ago, but didn't really show up. So two right. new teams, a lot of players. Yeah. You know, so it'll be it'll be enjoyable. Until next time, Jets fans, this is the Underdog Jets podcast. We'll catch you next Monday. Yeah.